Welcome to our lecture online. Before we get into the details of the difference between the pseudo range and the what we call the geometric range or the true range, and of course the equation kind of shows what the difference is, but we'll show you how we first come up with the pseudo range later. Here what we're going to do is show you what we call the error budget. The difference between the true geometric range, or the geometric range being the true range between the satellite called the SV, the space vehicle, and the receiver. And then the pseudo range, the initial estimate, kind of. It's kind of, it's not really an estimate. We do kind of a calculation. We'll show you why. Without taking care of any of the errors we might have in our equation to get some initial rough distance or rough range between the satellite and the receiver, and then we refine it by adding all these adjustment terms. So that's what we call the error budget. So, to find the geometric range, which is this symbol right here, the symbol rho, we take the pseudo range and then, of course, we subtract all these other terms. But in other words, if we solve for this, we take pseudo range minus all these correction terms that gives us the geometric range. So, what are all these different correction terms? Well, we have rel relativistic errors, both due to the general and special theory of relativity. We have to make adjustments for that, otherwise we're going to have a reasonable error. Well, not really reasonable, a substantial error, and we don't want that. All right, so we want to get rid of that. We have receiver noise error. Well, we need to get rid of that. We have the multipath error because sometimes the signal doesn't travel directly to the receiver. It bounces off a building or the side of a mountain or something like that. And so we have then additional distance to account for because of that multipath. We have what we call the tropospheric delays. There's some delays. There's a certain index of refraction in the troposphere so that we have some slowdown of the signal. We have to account for that, and that depends on the weather. We also have ionospheric delays in the upper atmosphere, depending upon the ionization level of the ionosphere. And then we have the clock errors. This is usually a very big error. And we have to take care of that as well. And we also have orbital errors because these orbits aren't perfect circles. They have some ellipticity to it, so there's some changes in the position of the satellite relative to the orbit where we expect it to be and where it actually is, so we have to account for that as well. And when we take a look at these clock errors, notice that it's simply the difference between the SV clock offset and the receiver clock offset. Now, let's say that the, the SV clock offset is off by 10 nanoseconds in the positive direction, and then the receiver clock offset is off by 8 nanoseconds in the negative direction. So one is ahead, the other one is behind. And so then we subtract one from the other, then they become additive, of course. If they both have an error in the same direction, then of course when you subtract one from the other, you get a smaller number. So it depends what the relative error is, if it's on the positive side or the negative side. Is the clock ahead or is the clock behind? We have to take that into account as well. So this is what we call the error budget. We have to somehow calculate all these various influences to the calculation of finding the range. So in order to find the true range, what we call the geometric range, we have to go ahead and calculate all those and subtract it from the pseudo range. And that is how it's done.